Welcome to the Maverick Podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Rose. And as always, a big shout out and a big welcome to all the free spirits walking the Maverick path, the independent thinkers, the people who believe that they are a tribe of one. I am so glad to know you and so happy to talk about the Maverick energy. This episode of the Maverick Podcast features part two of my conversation with astrologer Pam Gregory. We focus on the fast-developing, massive wave of transformative energy starting now in 2023 and continuing for the next three years. One of the messages of Saturn moving into Aries is healthy boundaries. Yes. Boundaries for self. Because Saturn is all about boundaries and, and Aries is all about self, individuality. Exactly where I was going with that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because, you know, I feel one of my life purpose missions and what brings me the most joy of anything is to teach people, number one, everybody has psychic or intuitive ability. Everybody has four psychic senses and everybody uses one of those senses as their primary sense and can learn to do it on command. You know, I grow weary of people thinking only some people can connect with higher dimensions in the universe, or only some people can get intuitive information. I go, absolutely not. Everybody can. You just need to learn how. And that is what I've specialized in teaching for so many years. And that's what brings me the most joy. It's like, get the information yourself. Believe in yourself, learn the techniques, and develop it. That's what I see really coming out with Saturn and Neptune and Aries. Mm, how nice, right? Spiritual People go, I can get the information myself. Yeah, it's spiritual self-sufficiency, isn't it? Absolutely. And you are superb at teaching that, Kathy. You really are. Um, you know, everyone should should study your material on that because it is absolutely fabulous. Yeah, it's important that people again, go back to, if I'm going through a rough time, maybe I can channel through my own technique. What technique can I create to help me get through this rough time? As opposed to, I need to go to somebody else to fix it for me. It's a mindset change. And along with that also is not babying people so much. Now, I know I'm opening myself up to criticism on this, and I don't mean this in a nasty way. It may have sounded like that. But instead of coddling or babying people, believing in them, pushing yep. them to find their own personal excellence, that's one thing Aries is about, is personal excellence. Now, yes. again, I have moon in Aries. And yeah, for a good portion of my life, I was highly competitive. But I wasn't competitive to the point where I said, I need to win so that you lose. I was competitive in, I am inspired when I'm around somebody who's excellent because I want to reach for that, yeah. you know, and that's Aries energy inspired to reach a new level of excellence. And in that way, I want people around me who do things better than I do so that I am engaged to reach for that same level. It's that kind of competition. And also there's a spiritual um, inspiration with this as well, isn't it? Because it's Neptune, it's a spiritual inspiration. Yes. And that's what, was, and I think also using your dreams individually, again, Aries, but often as I fall asleep, I'll show, I'll, I'll say, show me the next step. Show mm -hmm. me the next step for my highest good and the mm -hmm. highest good. And often you get that answer in your dreams or or whatever. So bring it back to self, but using your spiritual tools to, to do that. And often that's really helpful. And one other thing that I think is potent on just an energetic level is right now, Saturn and Neptune in Pisces, and it's a meandering current. You know, it's just like, hey, a little flow here, a little flow there. But it's like, it's just all over the place there. It's unformed when it gets into Aries that's not a meandering current that no. is a 
speeding train. That's a race car. That's a moving forward with the need to go somewhere because that's cardinal energy at its strongest. You know, super let's, clear. Yeah. Super clear. And it's interesting, isn't it? Everything will become speedy because you've got air and fire. You've got Aries, Gemini, Aquarius. Mm -hmm. It is going to go so fast. You know, we're, we're barely going to recognize our pasts. It's going to seem sort of Luddite, I think, looking back, you know, medieval, because things are going to be accelerating at such a rate with innovation and excitement and new developments and very much connected with the mind, I think. The mind, our perception, our interaction with reality is going to become huge going forwards with this Aries energy. So Manifesting the, speeds up. Yes, 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 absolutely. Manifesting, speeding up. And mm -hmm. also mental health. I think there could be a lot to do. You know, if we look back at previous examples of Neptune Aries and St. Bernardo's Salvation Army, the Red Cross, leadership for the underprivileged, this could be you know, because of what we're experiencing right now with Saturn, Neptune co-present in Pisces, it could be um, uh, really helping people with mental health problems. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of that mental health problems mm -hmm. and, and helping people to, to gain, again, self-sufficiency with their mental health. I think that's going to be a biggie. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Yeah. Because everybody wants to feel productive there's a drive deep down within us where we want to feel proud of ourselves. We want to feel productive. We don't want to be adrift, really. You know, and what's fascinating to me is right now we're in a phase where there are so many people, so many 16 year olds who are not going out to get the kinds of jobs that I did when I was 16. I mean, I, I had to, I had to go earn money if I wanted to do anything. So of course my first job was McDonald's and you know, my second job was at a theater and I worked all summer long and I worked all during the school year too, you know? So it's like, and that was normal for my generation. You took those summer jobs, you know, you took initiative, you wanted to earn your own money. That's not happening right now. 16 year olds, because they're either so involved with their school or their organized sports or whatever, they're not going out there into the workforce, but there is something very important to learn. And I have to tell you, when I got my first job at 16 at McDonald's, this was before, I mean, this is going to say how old I am, but this was before they had the kind of cash registers that would total up the order. And I vividly recalled, yeah, I had to have a piece of paper, write down their order and <laughs> add it up. Right as they're staring at me, and as the line is getting longer and longer and longer, and I'm going, Oh God, I'm doing addition under pressure, not with a calculator, on paper, and then tell them the total and then count back the change, you know. Which, if you did that now, people would say that's abuse. <laughs> that's abuse. Uh, that makes me anxious. You can't make me do that. I'm triggered by that. that that's the mindset now. But it's like that kind of challenge that says you can step up to this challenge. And at 16 year old, I just went, well, that's required in the job. So obviously I have to do it. And I rose to the level to do it because there was no choice. When we go into this Aries dynamic, more and more people are going to find out I can rise to that next level. I can. Nobody made me do it before, but now I must. And in some ways, the unfortunate part of the war cycles that have happened in the past during these Aries periods, the saddest part was people who had to go through war and torn countries and go through very little to eat and survival. They did learn they can rise to the occasion and they can find ways to survive. Now, I don't ever want to reproduce that again, but when massive challenge is in your path, you find a way. Yeah, I think that's so well said, Kathy. Beautifully said. And yes, I was also of that that generation. And you know, through through school and university and all of the holidays, I used to work on twelve-hour night shifts packing toilet rolls in a factory, <laughs> which was 
really grim stuff, but great camaraderie in the factory. And it was thrilling to get your £10 or £20 or whatever it was at the end of the week. You think, wow, you know, I've earned this myself, Aries energy. And it set up a discipline, a work ethic mm -hmm. from a very, very young age, because I was doing that from the age of 16 as well, because, you know, parents couldn't afford school fees and university fees. It really set up, you know, you, you will never be dependent on other people. You are mm -hmm. self-reliant. I think self-reliance is a big part of that Aries energy too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, right now, you know, we're getting ready to move into a new house. And we moved just last year in August. And so we contacted the same moving company. And we said, we'd like the same crew. You guys were great. We have big pieces and a lot of antiques. And you did a great job. Can we have the same people? And as my husband was talking to the moving company, they said the hardest part right now is nobody wants to take the jobs we can't find enough employees and we keep advertising and advertising. People say they're going to come in for an appointment to talk about being hired. They don't show up. And, the, and you know, so, and we've heard this from restaurant owners. We've heard this in a lot of the industries where it's hard work or labor, physically intensive. People are going, I'm not going to do that job. I'm just not going to do it. And they're even trying to hire the 17 year olds, the 18 year olds, you know, who are strong and muscular and they go, no, that's too much work. I'm not going to do it, which I think is so fascinating. And I hope that's going to change. And, you know, maybe there'll be economic shifts that happen in the world because I think there are going to be economic changes that push people to say, hey, I'll go work in the field if I have to work in the field. I'll do whatever it takes as opposed to, no, I get to pick and choose. It's so interesting, isn't it? So with Neptune in Pisces, this is this about relying on state benefits? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I see it very much. I think the whole, when the NHS was born, there was something around uh, Neptune at that time, you know, which was very much about the state will look after you. You can be a sick, weak person and the state will look after you. That's going to be turned on its head. Um, mm -hmm. when Neptune moves into Aries, they're such, such different energies, aren't they? From mutable yeah. water to cardinal primary fire. Exactly. One is engaged and driven forward. Um, but the interesting thing is where we are right now in the phase where, you know, some people are not wanting to work, um, not wanting to engage in that. Okay, for right now. But when it shifts, I think a lot of people are going to say, I forgot how good it feels to be able to measure the work I just did or to be self-sufficient or to be engaged. I mean, yeah, nobody necessarily wants to work in hard physical labor like moving furniture or, you know, landscaping or, I, I mean, I have to say though, when I drive by and I see workers on a roof installing a new roof in the hottest part of summer, my hat's off to them because they're doing that seven days a week. And that takes a kind of warrior courage and commitment that if you've never done physical labor, you have no idea what that's like. No idea. That is like a, a super skill to be able to do that day after day after day after day after day. And so I think we're going to get this combination of the spiritual, but the physical warrior, the self-sufficiency starting to come into play because Neptune stays in a sign for a long time. I can't remember what year does it leave Aries? 12 or 13 years. Once it fully moves in, in 2026, it's 12 or 13 years. Yeah, it stays there until 38. Isn't that weird to be talking about 38? 2038. Um, just, I've got my ephemeris in front of me, so I'm flipping pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's our Bible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you're you're so right about that because Aries can focus on a goal and just burn through to get to that goal. Single-minded focus is very, very much Aries, isn't it? Single-minded focus, no distractions. Just bzz, I'm going to burn through whatever I have to burn through to get to yeah. that goal. Well, and we've forgotten what we are capable of, how far we can take our body. Now, I learned this in martial arts. There were many times in martial arts where our training master pushed us to the point where he was trying to get us to either pass out or vomit. You know, he was Korean and that was his mindset. He goes, this is spiritual training. 
And he would push us to the point to see if we could tap into some hidden new level of energy to, to go past that limitation. And I have to tell you that it's the most exhilarating thing you can ever do when you find out there is more I can grab onto within me. There is more, there is more at every challenge when you go, no, I'm going to pass out. No, I just hooked into a, some more energy that's in there. And it, unless you experience that now, I'm not saying it's appropriate to try to drive somebody to pass out. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but those times when I found more inside me, that's this Aries dynamic we're coming into is I can dig deep and I can find more courage, more energy, more initiative to meet my challenges. And, you know, this is like in, in astrology, when you look at a natal chart, if there aren't any squares or oppositions in the chart, there's not enough developmental tension to push them forward. You know, sometimes we need challenge and tension to find out just what we're made of. Yeah, and isn't it interesting, um, Saturn in Aries going beyond your individual limitations. I mean, that's a clear expression of that symbolism, isn't it? Yes. And not going droopy, not giving in, not falling back, pushing forwards, indeed, stepping into the challenge, mm -hmm. stepping into your courage and your strength and your self-reliance in a, in a bigger way than you may have ever done before in your lifetime. Yeah, and I hope there's no hardship in the world that forces us to do that. It is not what I'm energizing. Um, but at the same time, these two planets are going into Aries for a reason, to remind us about the levels of courage and initiative and capability that we have. If there are some minor inconveniences that come up, this is saying you'll get through it believe in yourself you will find a way you know yeah beautiful it's interesting because i see mars saturn aspects um a lot with people who go into the military and this is similar saturn in aries is similar isn't it mm -hmm. that you can go beyond your limitations and and, and deliver that challenge well so, think about what the navy seals go through in their training yeah. you know uh, there's a part of me that can absolutely resonate with what they go through in their training. And it's like exhilarating to me because they have to, I mean, they reach into super skills mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. They just absolutely do. Think of the athletes that continue to play even when they're injured. It's a super skill to go into your mind and elevate beyond that. Um, yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. And it's, it's something about Aries is about feeling vibrant, feeling alive. It's interesting. I, I know someone who was in a big sailing race, sailing challenge, and because it was very windy, there was a, a big accident and a steel pole actually went through his forehead and came up the other side. And Ooh. he kept sailing in the race and didn't feel any pain until after mm -hmm. um, the whole race was over. There was something in him. He was so desperate to get to the, the end point and he had to have major brain surgery afterwards and blah, blah, blah. But during the race, yes. he had that energy to keep going. Of that now, symbol. the story you just told exactly illustrates. Now, we don't we are not wishing for that kind of intensity. However, I know I have, I, I mean, when I did martial arts, my right shoulder had had an injury when I was 18 years old. I was in a car accident that was a rollover and it was a convertible and I dislocated my shoulder badly. And ever since then, from 18 years old, well into my mid forties, my shoulder would dislocate if you looked at it wrong. And I, I, I learned how to put it back in and I learned what movements I could do or not do. And towards the end, when I went into martial arts, it's like, do I really want to go into martial arts when I have this vulnerability with my shoulder that would fall out of its socket? And of course it did many, 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 many times as I was in training, sparring, people would kick it out, punching, you know, doing all the moves. So I had that vulnerability going, I have to go in the sparring ring against this 200 pound, six foot three man hoping he doesn't hit my shoulder. I couldn't block with that arm because it would pop it out of socket. So I had to maneuver and find ways around that. 
So that gave me that extra edge of facing incredible fear. Now, some people listening might say, you're a fool for doing that. And maybe I was. I mean, I did end up having to get corrective shoulder surgery towards the end of that because it just got so bad, but it fixed it, thank God. But I had to find ways. I had to find the courage within to say, I got to go in this sparring ring and I got to maneuver around this so that my shoulder is safe. And so that I'm, you know, it's full contact sparring Mm -hmm. and something about that. Just again, you had to reach inside and find it in order to do it. And what, I mean, you are remarkable, Kathy, to go through it. But Mm -hmm. as you're speaking, what came to me is find the hero inside yourself with that Mm -hmm. area's energy. Mm -hmm. Find the hero inside yourself. And as you've been saying, you may have to dig a lot deeper, but everybody has that. Because in a challenging situation, we can rise to the challenge in a way that we may never have done before or had to do before. Mm -hmm. My guest today on the Maverick Podcast, astrologer Pam Gregory. Remember in The Matrix, the movie The Matrix? Yes. When there was the part where they were sparring and all of a sudden they did the mind shift where everything slowed down and you're you're viewing it from a different perspective. I actually had that happen once in sparring. The master that trained us hated me. He really did not like me because I was female and I was aggressive and I was strong and I didn't show the right kind of obedience. <laughs> Imagine that, right? (laughs) So he would put me in these situations that were frankly pretty dangerous. And one day he had these two 20-year-old, super, super strong athletic men. And he said, Kathy, you go spar two people. He never trained us how to spar two people. And he just sat there smirking, going, let's see what she does. And I had a matrix moment because it was like, this is dangerous. Oh gosh, I've got to figure this out. And honest to God, it was the best sparring I ever did. They didn't touch me once and I scored several points, but I experienced that matrix moment where they were moving in slow motion and I was all over the place. And I was so thankful that I had that experience, even though it was dangerous and it wasn't wise for him to do that. Looking back, I think to myself, why didn't I tell him to just go stick his head in the sand and leave me alone? But I guess I needed those experiences. But these are the things coming up for us where we reach deeper, we find out our capability, hopefully not through trauma or too much challenge, but I think there is going to be some challenge that pushes us to the next level. And then we find it and we go, wow, I'm indomitable. But it's the mind shift as well. The mind shift is such a big part of this, particularly going through 26, 27, 28. The mind shift is is huge. And I think we're almost going to become avatars, if you like. We're going to become so clear in our understanding of energy and frequency that we're going to be we're going to be the new human in a in a completely natural, organic way. We're going to step into being the new human with new skills, new understandings, new mastery. And I think that's what this combination of Aries, Gemini, Aquarius is all about. And and that's really exciting to look forward to. And new boundaries and pushback. The other thing about Aries is the ability to push back and go, no, mm -mm, not doing that. Nope. You know, yeah, Aries and- is good at saying that because of their, <laughs> their clear boundaries, you know. Yep. So, you know, if we were to recap, I think people starting right now in 2023 would be very well advised to understand sound waves are producing massive manifestations very quickly. Say your affirmations out loud. When you are in conversation, say what you want, even if it's bold. Um, say it out loud, engage those sound waves and try to avoid voicing what you don't want. I mean, we talked about shadow potential, but that's just informational. I don't energize it every day. Start it now, get into the habit. Body, mind, spirit awareness and how your thinking creates your reality because it is going to speed up. It's like a slingshot when you pull it way back and then you let it go and it that's what's going to happen in the early part of 25 fall of 25 it retrogrades back into the mushier completion zone let's finish up this other completion zone 
26, it flows back into speeding bullet time again. Bullet's not the right example to use here. 2026, speeding ahead. Yeah, I think that's beautifully said and, and, and a beautiful summary, Kathy, of where we're headed. And and excitement, you know, feel excited, feel that it's a whole new episode for humanity, feel you're stepping into the new human with new understandings as well. And and we will just rock it as we go through these next few years. Yeah, absolutely. And we can start now developing the habits to prepare us for this kind of strength that's coming in, undoubtedly. So um, you are so good at seeing these large cycles in on a daily basis, all the videos and the Facebook posts, all the information you give out are preparing people. But I wanted to take this time to focus on this magical moment in early 2025, new birth, new human, brave new world, new phase. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. I really enjoyed this conversation, Kathy. It's been it's been really thrilling. And, you know, I always learn from you. Whenever I listen to you, I always learn so much from you. So, you know, God bless you. You you keep the bar very high for our subject. And I'm so grateful to have you in my life as a, as a friend. Well, right back at you. Thank you for all your work. And let's just see where this large adventure is taking us. Yeah. Yeah. Happy days. All right. Thank you, Pam. Until Thanks. we meet again. Thank you. Bless you. And, and, and happy move. Hope all goes well. Yes, it will. I intend, I intend for that. 